Vikings move to Atlantis. Who should Manchester United sell and loan out in this summer's transfer window? For cheap, good quality football jerseys, go over to www.jerseyfever.com. A link will be left in the description and use code AlantisFootball to get 5% off. Before I get into the analysis, just give me 30 seconds to tell you about the OneFootball app because this is the app I use to keep up to date with the latest circulating transfer rumours and I find the match section on the app incredibly useful as well as they have stats from matches from pretty much every league in the world, which is great for keeping up to date with the leagues, teams and players that you aren't able to watch as much as you would like. If you like this channel, you'll definitely love this app and you'll be helping to support the channel directly, so click the link in the description to get the OneFootball app. So I have started the same series looking at who Chelsea should sign in the summer transfer window and in this video I'll be analysing who Manchester United should sell to bring in money and who should be loaned out as well and my reasoning behind keeping or selling players. In the next episode I'll be looking at where United need to improve and then in the following episodes I'll be analysing the individual players I think United should buy. So as of right now, I think United are on par with what we would have expected from them. At the start of the season, I didn't expect a title challenge, but I definitely expected United to comfortably finish in the top four, which as of right now is about where they are, not challenging City for the title at all, but really not being challenged too heavily by West Ham and Liverpool outside the top four themselves. I would have expected United to be getting to the Champions League quarterfinals, which is an obvious failure considering they failed to get out of the group at all. But if Solskjaer's side can go on to win the Europa League, as I think they should, then I think the Premier League finish off between 2nd and 4th plus Europa League title is a good season for United. However, the concern I have is that this will breed complacency at the club as we saw this happen with Arsenal under Wenger. They would finish 2nd or 3rd and have a forward perspective that they weren't that far away from winning the title, when in reality they weren't ever in the title race post-January, which is the situation that United currently find themselves in. I thought that last summer United's transfer window was atrocious. They didn't get the central midfielder, the centre-back or the right winger that they obviously needed. Needed, and in the end ended up spending £35 million on Donny van der Beek who isn't going to improve the starting 11 and doesn't really seem to fit Solskjaer's system. Going into this summer United need to be signing players who will improve their starting 11 straight away. They are never going to be in a position to compete with City, Chelsea, Liverpool or whoever else is in the title race in the future if they are constantly prioritising positions where they are already strong in. So who do I think United should be looking to sell from this squad? So as I said at the start of my series for Chelsea, I think the best way to decide who should be sold is to look at when contracts of players expire. That way you can maximise the amount of money that you get for each player and don't fall into the trap of having players running down their contracts. There are four players whose contracts expire this summer and they are Lee Grant, Sergio Romero, Yoel Pereira, Juan Mata and Edison Cavani. Grant's contract will probably be extended as he continues in that role of third keeper, potentially going on to get a coaching role as well. Romero has to be gotten off the books, his wages are very high for a player who's barely featured at all. And the same can be said for Juan Mata, who should have never been given an extension in 2019, but that was done due to the board's lack of ambition and willingness to spend money on transfers. Yoel Pereira, I think, should be let go and Edison Cavani has already said that he feels unsettled in Manchester so I do think it's best for the player and the club if he leaves at the end of his contract. The contracts expiring in 2022 are Paul Pogba, Eric Bailly, Jesse Lingard, James Garner, Tahif Chong and Axel Twanzebi. Now I thought that United should have sold Pogba last summer if he wasn't going to extend his deal as now with one year left on his contract United aren't going to be able to get a big enough fee to really make it worth selling him. I'd keep Pogba, try to get him to extend his contract next season but even if he doesn't just take the bullet and let him leave on a free in the summer. People are going to be annoyed with not cashing in on him in this window and then getting a replacement but United aren't going to be getting more than £50 million for Pogba in the summer. I know people are going to point out Eden Hazard who was a similar age to Pogba and in the last year of his contract and went for around £100 million but that was pre-Covid and even then he was massively overpriced. I don't see Real Madrid going any higher than 40 to 50 million for Pogba as they can just wait a year and get him on a free. Same with Juventus though this is because they don't have the funds to be paying 60 or 70 million for one player. PSG maybe, but I still don't see them going that high. United aren't going to be able to replace Pogba with a player of his quality anyway, even with £50 million. I think the best option is keeping him and then having next season with a world-class central midfielder in the team, and then looking to replace him the summer afterwards. Also, if United are challenging for the title and going well in Europe, that could even convince Pogba to extend his contract with United, as De Gea did in 2015, when it looked certain he'd end up leaving United. 
As for Bailly and Twan Zabi, they are both strange cases. I would keep both of them at the club and try to extend their contracts, as certainly as backup centre-backs to the two starters, they're very good options, but for some reason neither can seem to hold down a place in Solskjaer's starting eleven. but I still think they have futures at the club, so I would offer them both extensions. Jesse Lingard has looked very impressive at West Ham, however I still don't think he's United quality long term. He's 28 and likely on fairly high wages, so United don't want to give him another extension and then have an aging Lingard on their books for the next 3-4 to four seasons. His market value is going to be higher this summer and I do think United should look to sell him and could bring in around £15 million. I think that James Garner should be given a contract extension and then loaned out again, somewhere he's going to be a consistent starter, and then the season after bring him back to United in the first team setup. Tahith Chong hasn't impressed with his loan spells this season at Werner Bremen and Club Bruges, so I'd look to move him on this summer, but I don't think he's going to be able to bring in a substantial fee. The contracts expiring in 2023 are David De Gea, Nathan Bishop, Nemanja Matic, Phil Jones, Luke Shaw, Fred Marcus Rashford, Diego Dalot and Andreas Pereira. Straight away I'd be given a new contract to Luke Shaw. Rashford is on huge wages at the moment, so if United are going to extend his deal, it can't be with a pay rise. The same for David De Gea, though the goalkeeper situation at United is interesting. De Gea is still a top level goalkeeper, and much better than Henderson at the moment, but we have seen signs of De Gea's ability potentially declining. That's why I wouldn't be rushing into giving him a new deal just yet, but neither would I be looking to sell him. Out of this lot, I would be looking to sell Andreas Pereira, who does have a clause in his Lazio contract giving them the option to buy him for around £23 million. I don't see them paying that much, so United may have to settle for around 15 million instead. Nemanja Matic I think should be moved on as well, as he's 32 now, 33 in August, but United are probably only going to be able to get around 10 million pounds for him, and Phil Jones should be gotten off the books even without a transfer fee. I've no idea why he's still there, let alone why he has two years left on his current contract. Diego Dallo is another interesting case. I don't know why United loaned him to AC Milan, as he didn't have a starting spot nailed down, and when he has played, he's mostly played at left back as well. It just seems like a waste of a loan, as he hasn't significantly developed as a player, and his value has stagnated. United aren't going to get any more than the £16 million they paid for him back in 2018, so I'd look to loan him out again, this time to a European side who need an offensive right back. Along with Lingard, Andreas and Yoel Pereira, Cavani, Romero, Juan Mata and Matic, I'd also look to sell Daniel James, who I don't think is United level and hasn't improved much over the two seasons he's been at the club. Plus, I think United could get a club like Leeds or Crystal Palace to pay around £20 million for him, which is a very good deal for United. I think Brandon Williams needs a loan move as well, so I'd look to loan him out. Dean Henderson's situation is one United need to sort out as well. With goalkeepers, they need to be playing week in, week out. So unless Solskjaer is going to give Henderson a starting spot next season, which I don't think he will and shouldn't, I think he should be loaned out to another Premier League side. His value and ability is going to significantly increase if he's loaned out to another club like Southampton or Brighton, then if he's sitting on United's bench. After next season, United can look at the situation and then decide if he's ready to be the number one, but I certainly wouldn't sell him at this point. So with all these players being sold, I do think United could bring in around £60 million in transfer fees, plus getting some big wages off of the books. So in the next episode, I'm going to be looking at the positions that United should be looking to improve and why, and then in the following episodes, I'll be looking at the individual players I would sign for those positions. So make sure you subscribe and click the bell to get notified when those videos come out. Check out some of my other videos, including my series on Chelsea, with the first few episodes being out in that series. That will be linked in the description below and in the eye above, and put your thoughts in the comment section below.